Hello dancers and yogis, welcome to SKR Yoga and Wellness. My name is Sam, thank you so much for joining me today. I'm going to be leading you through a full one hour flexibility flow. So this is a full yoga class. We're gonna flow through a full warm up, going through two vinyasa flows to really work on that flexibility. And then we're gonna finish off class with a few yin style stretches. So we're going to stretch very passively and hold some positions for quite a few minutes, which is going to feel really, really great after all of that hard work that we put in at the beginning of class. So we're gonna just jump right in and get started. First, find yourself in a comfortable seated position, whether that's cross-legged like me or perhaps sitting on your heels. But wherever you are, try to feel your sit bones either connected to your heels or connected to the floor. And we're gonna grow tall away from that. So feel that your spine is lengthening up towards the ceiling. Let's just rest your hands on your knees and then you're just softly gonna close your eyes. So we're starting off by coming to an internal focus. Just breathing, noticing the breath. Finding nice, easy inhales and exhales, just breathing normally. And now I want you to actively feel that you're sending your breath down to your belly. And on an inhale, expanding the rib cage out in 360 degrees. So as if your belly is opening up like an umbrella all the way around. And then on the exhale, closing that umbrella off and allowing your belly to come in. And again, inhale, grow and expand in all directions. Exhale, just release that. Twice more, inhale, expand. And exhale, bring it in. One more time, inhale to expand. Make sure we're still growing tall through the spine. And exhale, let it go. And we'll softly blink the eyes open and I'll invite you to continue breathing and expanding through the belly as we just were as we come into our warm up, which is gonna start with our wrists. So bringing them out in front of you, just finding nice easy circles in whatever direction you would like. You can go as fast or as slow as you want here. So moving at your own pace, whatever you need today. And reversing the direction. So going the opposite way you just were, nice and easy. And we're gonna work at strengthening the wrists and the forearms a little bit. So you're gonna alternate between coming to a fist and coming to shooting your fingers out in a nice wide, almost like a jazz hand position. So really quick, eight times out in front of you, we go one, two, three, four, five, six, up overhead for eight. Really fight to find that tight fist to the side. Three, four, five, six, out in front for eight. Three, four, five, six, seven, a little bit faster. You might start to feel it burn, which is what we're going for to the side. And again to the front, even faster. Three, four, five, six, up overhead. One, two, three, four, five, six, to the side two, three, four. This is the last round. You got this. Three, four, five, six, seven, up overhead. So try to fully open and close those hands. Side, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and really shake it out. Ooh. That one looks really simple, but is deceptively difficult and hard. You definitely feel the burn through those forearms. Let's actually just bring the hands together, just making nice little circles. And we're gonna take this interlace, but bring it behind your back. And then you're going to bring your hands over to your right hip. So I'm mirroring you here, over to your right hip. Inhale, grow, find that long, tall spine. And then exhale, you're gonna let your right ear fall towards your right shoulder. So stretching through the left side of your neck here, nice and easy. Still feel that length through the spine. So it's just your head and neck that are tilting. Everything else stays pretty stable. Remembering that umbrella breath, so really expanding the rib cage in all directions. And from here, you're just gonna take your chin and you're gonna tilt it down towards your shoulder. So you're looking down on a diagonal. Nothing else changes. Your hands stay the same, upper body stays the same, just the chin moves. And this will change where you feel the stretch. If it feels a little bit too intense, you can always ease off here. 
then to come out of it first bring your face forward once again with your eyes on your chin and then we're lifting up from the head and then we're gonna do the other side of course so bring your hands now over to your left hip inhale to grow nice and tall feel that length through your spine and then on an exhale let your left ear fall to your left shoulder so we're keeping the face forward here just allowing the ear to fall spine is still long and tall finding that deep belly breath expanding and contracting nice and easy and just like we did on the first side tilting the chin down finding that nice long diagonal changing up where we feel that stretch you might find one side is much tighter than the other for me it's this side for sure so I'm easing off ever so slightly and try to tune into the own your own sensations that you feel as we do this and moving the chin and eyes back to face the front before we lift the head back up release the hands let's just give them a good shake and we're gonna come to all fours so hands right under your shoulders knees right under your hips and right away feel a little bit of core activation so your belly button is pulling in towards your spine here tailbone is reaching towards the back wall crown of your head is reaching towards the wall in front of you and then we're gonna roll through some cat and cow so on an inhale allow the crown of your head and tailbone to reach towards the sky finding an arch exhale curving once again inhale finding that arch exhale to curve it in let's go three more times following the flow of your own breath moving at your own pace Once you finish your last one, coming back to a neutral tabletop position. And we're gonna activate the core even more here. You're gonna extend your right arm and your left leg, and then on an inhale, lift them up so they're parallel to the floor. Now keep that back foot and that back leg totally parallel so we're not turning out into an arabesque here. Your toes are staying pointed down towards the floor, and you wanna feel that you're reaching, trying to touch your fingertips to the wall in front of you and trying to touch the back wall behind you with your heels so we're finding this long line you might start to feel a little bit of a burn in the core which is what we're going for and then on an exhale you're gonna curb your elbow and knee into touch inhale to re-extend exhale place it back down on the mat same thing on the other side reach left arm right leg inhale to lift Feel that long reach through both limbs here. Feel your core nice and strong so the torso is not tilting, keeping it stable. And then exhale, curve it in, knee and elbow to touch. Inhale to re-extend. Exhale, place the hand and knee back on the floor. One more time, both sides. Extend it first, then we inhale to lift. Feel that long reach, keep the torso steady. Exhale, curve, inhale, extend, back down onto the mat. Last one, left arm, right leg, inhale to lift, reach, 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 exhale to curve, inhale, extend, and back down onto the mat. Now from here, tucking your toes underneath yourself, keep your fingers spread nice and wide, you're gonna push into the, your toes to just lift your knees an inch or so off the floor. Feel that you're pushing the mat away from you so your, so your shoulder blades are wrapped around your rib cage. And then from here on an exhale, you're gonna push up, finding a downward dog position. Inhale, back to that knee lift. Hold for three seconds. Feel that core nice and strong. And once again, pushing on the exhale inhale back to your knee float hold for three seconds 
on an exhale push inhale back this is our last one holding for three two one exhale to push and we can walk the hands out finding a wider downward dog here get yourself set up allow your heels to relax towards the mat and then from this position you're going to lift your heels bringing them over to the right so you can bend through your right knee keep the left leg straight and then coming up onto your left fingertips so that you can twist and look under your left arm nice and easy and you might even feel this all the way down your left leg or you might just feel this in your upper body we're going to go ahead and go to the other side so heels and body centers and then we lift over to the left so left knee bends right leg stays stretched coming up onto your right fingertips and twisting underneath your right arm breathing nice and deep and coming back to that down dog feel nice and centered long through the spine crown and tail pull in opposite directions heels are relaxed towards the floor you can keep your knees slightly bent if you need feel your shoulder blades wrapping around your back hold for two more breaths and from this down dog you're gonna inhale to bring your right leg up overhead let's bend through that knee allow your heel to flop towards your left glute and then on an exhale we're going to bring it forward plant it in between your palms finding a nice runner's lunge here you can keep your hands on the floor and just to sort of wake up the legs a little bit we're just going to rock very easy back and forth forward and back just starting to wake up our hip flexor wake up the right hamstring and coming to the center you're going to drop your left knee down on the floor bring both hands to the inside of that right foot and you're going to lift your toes open up so we're basically turning out on that front foot and then you can stay up on your hands here or bring yourself down onto your elbows relax your head and neck forward try to relax through that right hip remembering that deep belly breath expanding and contracting like an umbrella and we'll come back up onto your hands plant your left hand where it is circle the right arm all the way back around behind you to grab a hold of your left foot and then we're going to do a couple little dynamic stretches here so first you're going to pull your foot in closer to your glutes so finding a nice deep quad stretch and then on an inhale kick your foot into your hand which is going to extend your chest up towards the sky so you'll feel a stretch through the right side of your chest and then again let's pull into your glute on an inhale exhale kick into your hand once more like that pulling in towards your glute inhale exhale to kick it out and we'll very gently bring that foot back down onto the mat turn your front foot in so that right foot comes parallel and then you're going to push into your heel keep the foot flex coming into a half split and you want to adjust so that your hip stays over top of your knee so we're at 90 degrees there so you might need to just adjust where your foot goes and then you're going to keep your hands on either side and again we're coming into a dynamic stretch here so i want you to feel like you're pinching the mat underneath you so your legs are squeezing in towards each other towards the midline as if you're trying to pull your heel in towards your knee on the floor and right away you want to feel that your hamstring behind you is activated nice and strong here so we're putting the muscle under a little bit of stress and strain so that when we release to stretch we can go a little bit farther and we'll hold for two more seconds here pulling the heel in and then release let that go let your upper body go curving your head forward and try to fully relax that right leg keeping the front foot flexed 
but the hamstring and the hip all stays relaxed. And we're gonna do that dynamic pull one last time. So coming up onto your hands once again and pulling your legs in towards each other. Feel that them squeezing towards the midline, activating your inner thighs, activating your hamstring, keeping that foot flexed, holding for two more seconds. And then we release, let it go. See if you can go a little bit farther this time. Try to fully relax through your neck. And we'll come all the way back up. Bring both of your hands on the inside of your right leg so that you can open it up to the side. So it's like we're in a tabletop position, but your right leg is extended. And I'm actually just gonna turn to face you so that you can see this one a little bit better. So right leg is extended, readjusting myself here. Then on an inhale, you're gonna breathe your left arm up and over. And then exhale, you're gonna thread the needle, bring that sh left shoulder all the way out down onto the mat. And then you're gonna grab a hold of your big toe, if you can, with your two piece fingers. So with your first two fingers, grabbing a hold of that toe. And then you can keep your right hand where it is or bring it behind your back, maybe interlacing around your thigh. So we're finding a nice twist perhaps a stretch between the shoulder blades. Feeling long through that right leg, which we just worked. Take one more deep belly breath here, feeling that umbrella expand. And we'll release the right hand back down onto the mat. Inhale, let go of the toe. Let's come all the way back to a twist and plant that hand back down on the mat. I'm gonna twist myself back so that the next part makes sense. And from here, you're gonna take your right leg, extend it behind you, and you're going to push into those toes to lift your left knee up into your chest as high as it will go. And then inhale, extend it up overhead. Allow that knee to bend. Exhale, take it forward. Inhale, up. Again, exhale forward, activating the core once again. Inhale up, last one, let's take it forward and we're holding and right away we're ready to go on the other side, planting that left foot down on the floor, finding your runner's lunge on the left, finding that shift forward and back, lengthen through your right hip flexor. And coming back to center, dropping that back knee down on the mat, and just like we did on the first side, lifting the left toes, turning them out, staying up on your hands or coming down onto your elbows. Feeling those deep breaths relax fully through your hip. Feel that your left big toe is still pressing into the mat so we're not sickling through the foot at all. And we'll come back up onto the hands, right hand down, this time left arm circles around, bending through the right knee, grabbing a hold of that foot. And then just like we did on the first side, inhale, pulling that heel in closer towards your glute. Exhale, kick into the hand, open up nice and wide. Inhale, pull it in close. Exhale, pull it back, open up wide through the chest. This is one of my favorite stretches to do. Inhale, pull it in. Exhale, open up nice and wide last time. And we'll release that right foot back down onto the mat. Turning your left foot in so we're parallel. Hands on either side and then push into the heel, take it back, half splits. Again, you might need to readjust so your hip stays on top of your knee, 90 degrees. Keeping that left foot flexed. And from here, that same dynamic stretch. So pinching the mat underneath you, pulling your heel in towards you, knee towards your heel, feeling that activation through the midline. Breathing here. Feel that activation through your hamstrings. Two more seconds and we'll release, let it go. Try to relax through the leg, let your upper body curl. Notice any sensation through the back of your left leg. 
And we're gonna do that one last time. So coming back up onto your hands here, try to feel that those hips are nice and square. And then from that square position, pulling the heel and the knee in towards each other. Feel that activation. Breathing. And we will release forward. Allow your neck and head to release, finding that curve. See if you can go a little bit farther after the second time. Feel nice and long and lengthen through the back of that left leg. And we'll inhale to come back up, both hands on the inside of that left leg, opening the left leg now out beside you. So again, finding that tabletop with gate pose variation. And then from here, you're gonna inhale the right arm up, exhale to twist, right shoulder on the floor, grabbing hold of your big toe if you can with those two piece fingers. And then again, your left hand can stay on the mat or wrap around behind you, perhaps grabbing that opposite thigh. Feeling that twist, that length through the back of the left leg, which we just worked. Feeling that deep belly breath like an umbrella. Take one more deep breath. And we're gonna release the left hand, bring it back onto the mat. Inhale, push into that hand to twist back up towards the sky. See if you can go a little farther. Placing that right hand back down. Now we're gonna take the left leg, swing it around behind you. Press into the toes to lift that right knee up into your chest. And then inhale to extend it back. Again, bringing it in. And inhale back. Exhale in. Inhale back. This time we hold, taking it in. Hold it for five, four, three, two. We're gonna place that foot down, but walk both feet to the top of your mat this time. You're gonna take your heels in, toes out towards the outside of your mat. Drop your hips down, palms together. Use your elbows to push your knees open to the sides. Coming into Malasana or Yogi Squat here. It's just opening up a little bit more through the hips should feel really nice after that first series. Continuing to find those deep belly breaths. Feel your belly expanding against your thighs. And now from here, you'll place your hands down. Send your hips up to the sky and you're gonna walk your feet in so they're right underneath your hips. So in a parallel position. And then you're gonna take the palms of your hands, flip them up and you're gonna place your feet on top of your hands. So we're standing on our palms here, Padangustasana. And from here, you're going to just bend slightly through the elbows to pull your upper body closer to your thighs. So we're finding a fairly intense forward fold here, really stretching and lengthening through our posterior chain here. If you can have a slight bend in your knees. We don't wanna lock through the back of your knees, especially if you're hyperextended here. But feel that your tailbone is reaching up so we have a long low back here. Take one more deep breath. Release the palms. And we're gonna bring, bring the feet even closer together, big toes together, heels apart, bending. Breathe the arms up and overhead as we push to stand. And then you're gonna take a seat in your chair pose here. So keep your weight in your heels. If you peer down, you should be able to see all 10 toes. Back is long, crown and tail reaching in opposite directions. And then from here on an exhale, you're gonna take this chair and revolve it. So you're gonna take your left elbow, crossing it to the outside of your right knee. So finding this twist through the spine, Press the palms together to keep the chest as open as you can and try to keep your knees in line with one another so your left knee doesn't shoot out too far in front of the right. And now from here, 
look down into the mat to help you with balance. You're gonna transfer most of your weight into your right foot, and then you're just gonna step the left leg back into a lunge, but maintaining that revolved position of the upper body. So it's definitely testing your balance, using some strength in that leg. Hold for one more deep breath. And let's take one more breath here. And we're gonna come to the center, release the hands down, and you're gonna straighten through that right leg, coming to a very wide pyramid pose here. And you can allow your back leg to spin at a 45 degree angle. So your toes are pointing on a diagonal towards the outside of your mat here. But even though that foot is turned in, try to keep that left hip plugging forward so your hips are square to the top of the mat here. And allow your upper body to just release over that right leg. And we're gonna come forward back into a runner's lunge. So you're lifting your back heel. And then from here, we're gonna rotate so that you're facing the long edge of your mat, finding a side lunge here. Nice and easy. Try to keep your uh, inner thighs activated so we're not sitting into that right leg, but there's a little bit of activation so that we can transfer over to the left, to the other side. And then again, you can use your hands to help you here as we get going. And to the left. And now if you can, keep using your hands if you need, but if you can, you can lift your arms up floating side to side. Feel free to move at your own pace here, really working the inside of the hips, working those adductors, those inner thighs. And you're gonna stop over to the left, bringing your hands down, and we're gonna rotate to face the back of your mat. Walk your back foot in, open up your feet, heels in, toes out, repeating Malasana, our yogi squat, here facing the other side. So your hips should feel a little more open after that skandhasana, side to side. Feel long through the spine. Feel your belly expanding against your legs. And just like we did on the first side, we're going to repeat standing on our palms. So you're gonna bring your hands to the floor, send your tail up to the sky, turn those feet in, and bring them just underneath your hips. And then from here, lifting your toes so you can place your palms underneath. And you can slightly bend your knees if you need. Let's inhale, grow long through the spine. And then on an exhale, bending the elbows to pull yourself in closer to your legs. Make sure we're not locking through the knees here. Feel that your shoulders are pulling down away from your ear. Shoulder blades are wrapping around the back of your rib cage. It can be challenging to keep the neck long in this position. So try to be aware. And we will release the hands, release the toes back down onto the mat. And now bring your feet all the way together, toes together, heels an inch or so apart. You're going to bend and we're going to bring the arms up the side as we push to stand, palms come together to touch. And then on an exhale, sitting down in your chair, sending the tail backwards. Crown reaches up tall. Feel that core activated, belly pulling in pushing the palms of your hands together. And then on an inhale, we grow and get taller. Exhale, twisting to the left, so you'll be facing the same direction you were on the first side. Keeping your knees in line. Really, really push your palms together here. Feeling that twist. Make sure your weight is still in your heels. Holding for a couple more breaths. And from here, bringing your eyes down to the floor to help with balance. Weight is primarily in your left leg. And then we shoot the right leg back, 
Finding your lunge, maintaining your twist. Feeling that deep belly breath, especially in this very powerful pose. One last breath here. And we'll come back to center before we release. And then this will feel glorious as we straighten up. Finding this wide pyramid pose. Back leg at a 45 degree angle. Square off that back hip and relax your upper body over your left shin. Feeling nice and long through the back of that leg. I'm gonna widen even further here. Feel free to adjust at home as well if you need. Just always remember to square off that hip. And then from here, we're taking it forward into our lunge again so that we can transition to the side. Again, feeling activation through that inner thigh on the left side. And then we come up and over to the right. And again, up and over to the left. One more time with the help of your hands, up and over. And then you can keep using your hands or lift them up to really activate those legs. Up and over. And again. Twice more. Last time. To the right, hands down, we're squaring off once again. Place both of your hands on either side of your right foot. So now we're facing the top of your mat once more. We're gonna step that leg back and place your knees on the floor. And we're going to come all the way up onto your knees. So we're gonna progress into a back extension and I'm going to lead you through two different stages of this back extension. We're going into camel pose. So if after the first stage you feel like that's enough and you don't wanna go any farther, feel free to hold in that first stage. And then if you wanna continue, you're welcome to, of course. So the first thing you're gonna do, set up on your knees, pulling up nice and tall. So find that nice tall length and spine that we've been working with all class. You're gonna inhale to grow taller. And then on an exhale, you're just gonna lift as if you're doing a high lift up towards the sky. So your chest and heart are reaching up. So this is the first stage here, just this back extension from your knees. And if you'd like to progress further, you're gonna extend one arm out, trying to find your heel behind you. And then the second arm out. And I like to keep my head along my neck so I'm not releasing the neck all the way back here. I don't find it quite so comfortable, but you're welcome to, to choose what line of the neck works for you. Whatever variation you're doing though, make sure you're squeezing your glutes to push your hips forward, finding that nice arch through the spine, opening up the chest nice and wide, continuing to feel those deep belly breaths, expanding the rib cage like an umbrella, Take one more breath here. And to come out, if your hands are on your heels, you're first gonna come back to that first stage, hands on your hips, and then roll yourself back up. And then we're going to take this into a child's pose. And you're gonna bring your knees together for this child's pose so your spine can curve over top. I'm gonna bring my hands behind me. You're welcome to do the same. And just breathing, take five breaths here. And from here, you can use your hands to help you if you wish, just rolling up to a nice seated position. This is where we're gonna progress into the yin portion of class. So we're starting to wind down from, from our practice. So we're going to hold each pose for a lengthened period of time, and we're trying to passively sit in this stretch. So we're no longer looking for muscle activation, just allowing the joint to sit in that stretch. The first one we're going to do is pigeon pose on the right side or swan as it's called in yin. So starting from all fours, you're gonna take your right knee forward in between the palms and then trying to 
flatten out that shin as much as you can. So if you are able to sit in the, this pose with that shin at 90 degrees, that's what we're aiming for. If not, you can bring it in a little bit closer. I generally like to sit at about 45 degrees with that front shin. And then again, as this is very passive, you're gonna walk yourself forward. If you have a cushion or a blanket nearby, feel free to grab that as well. And then I'm just gonna release forward. I'm turning my head towards the left here. And we're gonna be here for about three minutes. So really just allow yourself to focus in on the breath. Try to be present. If you feel your thoughts drifting, just bringing them back to your breath without any judgment. Try to resist the urge to fidget and move around here. Really challenge yourself to stay in this posture without any movement for these full three minutes. Always, always bringing it back to the breath, using that same umbrella image that we've been using all class, breathing in and out. very gently here using your hands to help you pushing yourself back up to a seated position as this is a flexibility flow we're going to transition by just extending that right leg out so finding us a, a quick split on the side we're not going to stay here for three minutes but just after all of that work that we've done on your hamstrings stretching out for a moment finding your split for this pose, we will allow ourselves to fidget so you can move around a little bit, maybe bringing your hands into the center here, maybe leaning forwards, doing what you need. Take a couple more breaths. And to come on out, I'm gonna circle my leg all the way around to take myself back to that all fours position and we're doing that same thing now on the left. So taking your left knee forward or square off that back hip as best as you can. Get yourself situated so that you're comfortable. If you do need a block here or a cushion underneath the hips, if you find that there's too much of a space, you're welcome to use that just to close the gap so that you can feel a little more comfortable. The goal here is that we are passively sitting in this pose. And once you get yourself all set up and situated, you can bring yourself down onto your hands, leaning forward. And once again, focusing in on that breath, 
in this pose here, we're trying not to move, trying not to fidget. Staying grounded, staying focused on the breath. Another three minutes here on this side. And once again, gently rolling yourself back up. Move nice and slow. We don't want to rush after holding that pose for so long. And you're going to take your left leg now and extend it out in front of you, finding your split on the left side. Again, doing what you need, allowing ourselves to, to move around here. So you can rock a little bit side to side, take your upper body forward if you'd like to take it into an arch back, up to you. Just doing what, what your body needs today. Take two more breaths. And this time to come out of this split, I'm gonna take my right leg to bring it forward to my left, just so that we can easily roll onto our backs. And for this next pose, we're going to be extending our legs up overhead. Up to you if you'd like to keep the opposite left foot flat on the floor, or if you'd like to extend it out underneath you. I'm gonna to choose to extend it underneath me, but if you'd like to bend through that knee, that is always an option. First, let's start just by hugging the right knee into your chest. And then you're going to take the foot, extending it up 
And again, we're trying to find a passive stretch here. So bring your arms to any place along your leg that feels most comfortable that you can hold for a long period of time. I'm gonna hold just behind my calf here. And again, this is passive, so we don't need to stretch or flex the foot, just keep it relaxed. We also don't need to fully pull up and stretch the back of the leg. We can allow the knee to relax slightly so we're not locking into the joint. And although we are passive, there is a very slight activation in the arms just so that we can gently guide that leg and track it closer to us. And remember here that we're not trying to go for our maximum right away. So keep it at about a five, I would say, in terms of resistance. So this isn't your full stretch because we are gonna be sitting here for quite a while. So just try to find that five in resistance level and then just relax. You can close your eyes. Bringing your focus back to that deep belly breathing. Taking another couple minutes here. And from here, you can let go of that leg. Again, moving very, very slowly. Do not rush. Just bend the knee into your chest once more. Maybe circle through the foot, both directions. And we're gonna do that same thing to the other side. So extending the right leg out or bringing the sole of your right foot to the floor, whichever you prefer. And then hugging your left knee into your chest. And then from here, extending it up overhead. Again, finding a comfortable position for the arms that works for you. Not locking through the knee, keeping the top foot relaxed. Slight activation in your arms, but only using what's absolutely necessary. So try to keep the shoulders relaxed and we're not using any tension. Coming back to your breath, taking another few minutes here.
moving very slowly, releasing that leg. Bend into the knee. Hug it in close to your chest. And we're gonna keep the left knee in. Bring the right knee to meet it so both knees are pulling up towards your armpits. From here, we can roll a little bit side to side. And we're gonna finish off our final pose for this class will be happy baby. So flexing the feet, bringing them up to point towards the ceiling. You're gonna grab the outsides of your feet with your elbows on the insides of your legs. And when we're here, try to feel that your tailbone is pressing into the mat. So we're not curling the spine upwards, but we're keeping the spine nice and long. And just like we did in those leg pulls, you will need a slight activation through your arms just to gently guide those legs in closer towards the floor. But again, not more than is necessary. And we're not pulling to our absolute maximum because we are gonna be holding here for quite a while. So we need to be able to sustain. And usually in a vinyasa class, I would invite you to rock back and forth, but because this is a more passive yin approach for this particular pose, we're gonna fight the urge to move staying still always bringing our focus back to the breath even if it wanders take another three minutes here Releasing your arms, bending the knees into your chest once again. And we'll just make small little circles with the knees, almost like you're giving yourself a massage. Massaging your lower back against the floor. And let's just take those circles in the opposite direction, nice and easy. And from here, we will open up into Shavasana. So taking your legs out wide, allow your legs to flop open into a turned out position. Your arms are by your sides, palms facing up, neck is long. Your back can naturally curve. So we're not holding any tension, any muscle activation here whatsoever. Just allow your entire body to melt into the floor. And I'll invite you to focus on any sensations that you're feeling through the body after that class. How do your hamstrings feel after all of that work? Your inner thighs, your spine, the sides of your body, your neck. 
just check in and see how all of these places are feeling. And of course, as always, if the mind starts to wander, bringing your focus back to the breath. We've been here for about three minutes now. I invite you to stay in Shavasana for a little bit longer, but this is where I will leave you. Thank you so much for doing this class with me. Please don't forget to like and subscribe before you go. And I'll see you on the mat again very soon. Namaste.